This edition of Sports in Focus was recorded before Rene Moyes was fired as technical director of the Reggae Boys. The program should give local football fans an insight into what the technical director was thinking just before he was axed by the JFF. Pleasant viewing. Welcome to Sport in Focus. I'm your host, Fitzroy Prendergast. Of course, Sport in Focus is brought to you by Digicel, the bigger, better GSM network. And we've caught up with the technical director of the Reggae Boys, Rene Simois, Professor Rene Simois. Certainly, he just had a, a very tough workout here at the Grand Leader Braca Resort in Trelawney. And we want to talk to him about what's happening in the world of football and just for the viewers to get an understanding of where this, the professor is coming from. In, in terms of football. So we're going to be talking to the technical director of the Reggae Boys when we come back on Sports in Focus. Now your friends and family overseas can send Digicel credit directly to your phone in Jamaica. With Digicel Top Up, your friends and family from the UK, USA, Canada, Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and Cayman can send you credit from any Digicel Top Up outlet or participating Western Union location in the USA. All they need is your area code and telephone number. Visit www.digicelljamaica.com or call 137 from your Digicel phone to receive more information so you can tell your friends and family the good news. Conditions apply. Digicel, the bigger, better network. Welcome back to Sport and Focus. Of course, as I said, we have the technical director of the Reggae Boys, Professor Rene Simois. Coach, congratulations for all that you've done in football and glad to have you on Sport and Focus. Thank you. It's my, my pleasure. First of all, the Jamaicans, obviously, we've had two stints of Rene Simois in Jamaica. We'd like to know a little bit about you in terms of how you started in football. Tell the viewers you know, how you started in football in Brazil and what, is, what it's been like for you over the years. You know, what's the interest in Brazil, because it's the first gift a boy received when he born, it's a football, and the jersey of his father's club. No matter which club, the father cheer, the boy will cheer for the same club. Some families, when the boys grow, they chant, but it's not usually. Usually the boys cheer for the club his father is cheer for. So for me it was not different. And my family, uh, everybody enjoy football. My father was almost a professional player. He, he, he was playing. But it's amazing because in, in 40s and 50s, uh, football was not worth like it is nowadays. So uh, my grandpa, went for my father and said, it's time for you to get a serious business, business, get away from football and start work and because you soon you will get married, so my father gave up. But he was a little bit frustrated because he didn't continue as a professional. So he put a lot of hopes on me because when he saw me play, he always said, you go to be a professional. So since I born, I think I was with the stamp to be a, 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 in football. I went, I played football in the club. Since I was 12 years old, I was playing. So I was the professional. I played for professional ball session. But when I get to university, uh, something happened because I was getting love to the science of the sport. And I decided, no, I want to be in university. I don't want to be on field. So, I get my PE degree, but after that I get my post-graduation in football. Also I went for sociology, sociologist and pedagogy. It's two areas that combine. And when I saw myself I was deep in football again. So I am a coach now. Once I, I get my coach certification in university. But two years now I am a coach. Coach, how difficult was it to live up to your father's expectations? I think there is no a great man, a great champion 
that doesn't know how to deal with pressure. This is the key of success in your life, it's how to deal with pressure. Because you have pressure every day, you have pressure because you have to, to buy things that your family needs, you have pressure because your boss has some expectations, you have pressure because you are own of the business and you expect some your employees to perform very well. So the secret is, is you are be in the middle, in the balanced zone. I always, I don't get so much exci excited when I get some win, some, some titles, championship. I'm not depressed when I, I don't get my result. So when you get this balanced zone, you can, you can reach. So I think since I was young, I learned how to deal with depression because this expectation was very high. So I, I, I think there's an incentive that don't kill me that generates some vital energy inside of me. That was amazing. Now, looking at your career in coaching in Brazil, um, some of the jobs that you, some of the coaching jobs that you've had in Brazil. Tell us about that. I, I, I start to control the entire club, the cl German club. Yeah, mm -hmm. was there. I was in charge for all categories as a manager. Mm -hmm. So also I, I coach the, the team, the, the under 20 team. After I moved to Fluminense, to Vasco, I work in Flamengo, Olaria, I work in Serrano, Mesquita, Portuguesa, Vitória, uh, Santa Cruz, Portuguesa, uh, a lot of clubs in Brazil, and also six different countries, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Jamaica, Trinidad Tobago, and Iran, also in, in Brazil. Interesting. Lots of experience. Yep, now, let's look at um, coming to Jamaica in early in the 90s. Jamaica didn't have um, a pedigree, so to speak. Below to zero in football. Exactly. That, that, that the cool runs in Brazil they call it below to zero because right. in, in the snow. So when you talk about football in Brazil in that time, everybody remembered about the cool runs that you call mm -hmm. below to zero in Brazil. Exactly. You said, hey, football in Jamaica is below to zero. Mm -hmm. Because I knew football. Mm -hmm. I was here in 1989 with the under-20 nationals. Okay. We spent 15 days in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So we knew there is nothing in Jamaica. So Why did you take that job? If you knew that Jamaica, you know, was little or nothing? Want, I didn't want to take Okay. Tell us about uh, that. that. That was the Brazilian government. That was Captain Royal. Right. It's very smart. You mm -hmm. went to the uh, to Prime Minister and tell them that he needs a coach from Brazil. And the, the Prime Minister has an offer from the, the, the Brazilian Foreign Minister to offer a technical cooperation to Jamaica. So Brazil, Captain Brio went to Brazil. I I was member of the Brazilian as I am until now, the Brazilian Football Academy, I am teacher again. And the the president asked me to to escort Captain Burrell, he has some interview because I refuse the mm -hmm. offer for me because Captain Burrell has nothing done less a former professional player, a former national coach, speak English with international experience and the university degree. The guy has this, it's a very expensive. So, and the, they offered me, I said, no, thank you, Jamaica, there is nothing there to me to do. But Captain went there, and one night we talked, and he asked me, I asked him, Captain, what do you want to do? The next four years I want a program. I took a napkin, and I write 10 points in the napkin, what Captain supposed to do with the new coach. So he interviewed the coach, was five coaches, and the in, in the evenings I returned there to escort him for a restaurant, for dinner. And I asked him, was really, which coach he decided? He said, I am a military man. I know what's the best for my coach. You are the best, you are the coach. I said, this guy has no brain. He's crazy. I am not in the list. I said, I am not in the list. I don't want. She said, no, you will be my coach. I said, I take this guy out by the another way. I said, you don't have money to pay me. He said, but your government has money. I said, that definitely he has no brain. He's totally crazy. But he went to Brazil, he's the capital of Brazil. I don't know what he did. He convinced the vice president of Brazil. I don't know how he met the guy, because it's not easy to find a, a, a vice president of Brazil. 
and they convinced him and he paid me the three months just to come here and uh, do a project. I came here and the captain joined everybody in the Jamaica Football Foundation. So they start paying my salary. What's a little one in the first year, but second years they come better, third better. When you qualify, was Kappa coming involved, was a very good salary. But it, it, it's good, this opportunity to tell the Jamaicans. It's only four months I, I took the big salary, because after four months Kappa, Kappa give up of the contract. And I didn't left Jamaica, because more than 17% of my salary was paid by Kappa. When Kappa give up, I told Kappa, we have agreement between us. I will stay here, and they do receive the money. So I heard somebody said that the money they paid to borrow was the same they paid me to me. was the first month only, four months after no, he didn't pay more. And when I came here, the amount they paid to, to, to the, the, the former coach, Mr. Bora, is the um, uh, very close amount they are paid for all Brazilians, for all my staff. Because I said for Captain, uh, I will not go to Jamaica in this situation to receive the kind of money that you were paid for the coach. Come from Jamaica, I not accept. But to spread for all coach, I think it's worth. Because we are working in nine national different teams. So yeah. that's a, a well expend money and the, it's, it's, it's worth. Let's talk about 1998, the, the great period in Jamaica's football. Jamaica, as we, uh, we, we already knew, didn't have any footballing um, pedigree in the world. Uh, you took the job, you came to Jamaica. Did you think at that moment that Jamaica could have qualified for the World Cup in 1998? Listen, Reverend Miller, he's a very interesting guy. And what he's doing with this time now, in 2000, 2008, they ask the players to behave like architects. What architect does when he wants to, to build a building? He take a vision. He can see far away the building there. He say that's the build I want to see. He, he dream. He has visualized the building. So after he get the, 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 the vision of the end, he come to begin. He goes on paper and start draw everything about the build. So I didn't know if my build would be a beautiful one in that time, but I could visualize the build and I come and I start with the foundation in the beginning and the foundation was very good. And I keep say for the I keep sad for the making that time. I didn't know if you could qualify or not. I never promise. Because who promises must deliver. So I didn't know. But I invite them to dream. Let's dream because football is very democratic. If it was a basketball, volleyball, I could say, hey, forget it, there is no chance. But football is a sport, it's, it's very democratic. The, the, the lowest ranked team can beat the highest ranked team in the world. So that's football. But it's a matter of confidence. We have to build the confidence on players. This is what we did. This is what we did with the country. The country start get confidence, and by this confidence, by this dream, by this visualization, they start get united. I think the, the most, the most good feelings I had from that moment is the atmosphere, the the, the, the way Jamaica's the united. Arnett Garden and Tivoli Garden, they start cheer together. We had, I do remember exactly, I think it was 42 games in National Stadium. We just lost one in that time. And we never had any problem in National Stadium. So that was really a good signal that the hopes bring discipline. If there is no hopes, if there is no dreams, there is no discipline. So what I think reggae boys in this time and that time brought to the count and can bring for the count is this kind of dream, this kind of hope that bring discipline. And with discipline, I don't know anybody that don't succeed. 
we had some very bad matches in 1997 and we, a bad patch when we almost some people thought that we couldn't qualify again I remember in Canada you know we had some six bad patches 6-0 against, zero. against the, uh, we, we played the first game the first game we, we played against the United States we right. the second one we lost 6-0 to Mexico. The third one we lost 3-1 to Costa Rica and the fourth one we draw against Canada mm -hmm. and the everybody was totally desperate. I was calm because you have to make analysis for what's going on. We play one game at home, we draw and we play three games away and we lost two, draw another one it was not so bad. So let's see for the other three games at home. So. When come, we beat El, we beat El Salvador, was an empty stage, almost empty stage. We beat Canada and we beat Costa Rica. So we draw United States, we draw against El Salvador, and we draw against Mexico, Mexico to, qualify. to qualify. So it's a matter of you know what you are doing. When you know what you are doing, you keep calm, concentrate, focus, and you don't give your way so easy. What was it's the another another point? Another lesson. We learned how to suffer without losing hope. That was the reggae boys. Because everybody was completely out of order. They didn't give up and we never give up in the camp. The team, the federation, Captain Burrell, Horace Reed, Hep Sadela, all federations never give up. So that was was good by that point. What was the feeling like for you personally, coach, when you realized in Mexico, I was in the stadium when Jamaica drew nil all and we knew then that we had qualified for the World Cup, something the first time in our history. What was the feeling for you? My first feeling was think about my family. <laughs> I, I, I can see the, 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 the videos from that time and I turn and I point to my family and the, that was a feeling, that accomplishment, a family accomplishment because it was not easy for my family that time. I was so deep involved with the team, so I, I give up. Uh, I have one, my youngest daughter so far, she's in treatment. Nobody to make it the first time I say that. Captain Burrell knows, Horace Reed knows. Almost I couldn't come here and the... Four months ago, I, most, I, I, I lived to make it because I went to Brazil to see my daughter. But she's thanks God, she's, she's doing well. And I think a lot of things she has done as a result for that time because she, had, she didn't have a father. And sometimes physically I was there, but mentally I was not there for, this, for her, for she. So this is some, uh, 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 some advice I give for fathers and mothers. Sometimes you are at home, but you are not there for your, your kids. Be there, be there. Don't be all physically, but spiritually, mentally for them. So I was so concentrated my team that my wife, she reports until today, she said, but she's, she's so mature. She said, sometimes I talk for half hour and Renee didn't list a word, a single word. But she never, never get mad with me because she knows I was. So when you qualify, I had to pay back for them. So I look for my phone and say, yes, we did. We did together. It was a great feeling. After I start thinking about Jamaica, I start thinking about the players. I start thinking about Captain Buya, what he did, the courage he had. Uh, because it was not everything good. I lost many games. We didn't qualify here in Jamaica for the Shell Caribbean Cup in 1995. We are disqualifying in, in the, the quarterfinals. Who would kick us out? And everybody want my neck. And the captain was there, formally said, no. I went for this doctor. The doctor gave him a prescription for four years. I never changed my doctor before I finished my pre prescription. When I finish my prescription, I can change. So captain was really tough. Was not easy there. Now, 
we went to France and um, Jamaica. The atmosphere in France was phenomenal. We lost two games, but we we and we, we, we defeated Japan 2-1 with two goals from Theodore Whitmore. It must have meant so much for you to be on the world stage with all these the best teams in the world, seeing Jamaica doing well enough to beat one of the countries in their group. How how was the experience in France? It was good and it was bad because the, the, the work we, 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 we did with the team was really close to perfection. There is no perfection, always you get close. But when you get close to perfection, you discover there is something more to do. It's like the boat, boat now. The guy is the world 100 meter record. So he gets perfect, but now he discovered they can do better and he has to reduce his, his time record. So it was almost perfect, but it was a TV program that the night before the Croatian game come and watch show on the British television channel 4 and destroy everything in our, our company. Because they shows as a rich, clever, health, English-based players to make it and show a poor, inadequated and the everything you can look for Jamaicans that play in Jamaica. That was really, really terrible. Let's, let's break, spread our team in two groups. After the Croatian game, there is a big talk about money. It was a group for one side, group for another side. I lost total control of the group. So only after we are defeated by Argentina, I could call the, the team and say, okay, look now what we did by break our group. Where you go for now? We go to lost all three games. So we had a friendly discussion that time and the players was a little bit shaken by the, the, the bad defeat against Argentina. So we get together again and beat Japan. And that day was some beat Japan. But Japan it's, it's a country that has heavy investment on football in that time. And it was, was great feeling for, how you say, a little Jamaica with a, a, a big Japan. And the, well, it was great. And the, I keep saying that we, we have something very special as a Jamaican. The strength within Jamaica has, it's, I never found anyone, even though in Brazil. No. You're back for a second term. Why did you believe, why did you take the job to come back to Jamaica? First, I miss Jamaica, I can tell you. I never come back. I left here in 2000 and I never come back to Jamaica. Every time I had a chance to return, uh, was in bad time, the, the, the national team was not going well. I said, if I appear in the show up, show up in, in Jamaica, people will talk that I am taking the, the job scope and the, that's not sound good. So I not, never return. I miss it. And the, there is another point. Captain uh, was kicked out, what I think was a big mistake from, from the, the, the football fraternity to take Captain away. It was not fair or was wrong for football. And the, we talk every time, we met every time. We met in Olympic again when I was called to Brazilian national team. We met in Qatar in FIFA, in FIFA meetings, I was called in, in Qatar. And the, always we keep talking, me and the captain, and the, we had a dream to put the team together again. So when he called me, I was almost finished my league in Brazil and was in the edge to be a champion. I said for him, captain, uh, if I not renew my contract with this club, because I, I feel so good, uh, I don't accept any invitation. I have a big other invitation. The club is bigger than my club, Cruzeiro, Corinthians, Grêmio, Flamengo. I have invitation from them to coach this club. I say no, cup. I'm not a sad. But there is, a, I think, in my club that didn't work well with the next president. I didn't work with the next president. I never work with somebody I don't want or I don't feel I go to be productive. So I said no, I will not be here. I call the captain, captain, I go to return to me. My, my Brazilian friends are again told me, you are crazy what you are doing. Go back to Jamaica. Do you think you can qualify Jamaica again? I said, yeah, I think. Why not? 
but you qualify what's what the problem it's a different time it's a different mentality the different teams the clubs the professional way in Jamaica is different and the players are different it's totally different work I can tell you it's totally different what I have done for what I am doing now uh, I cannot say for you is more I don't believe Jamaica can qualify by codes. I don't believe Jamaica can qualify by Captain Horace Burrell president. I think you can qualify if you put everything together. And if you, we realize that the reggae boy is more than a football team. The reggae boys, it is in reality the country of goods. If you don't realize that, that will not give the strength enough for us to qualify. You have to be a warrior, you have to be an army on combat in war. And what makes it diff difficult this time, because I don't have the players every time here to tell them this, this to show them. The last time I came here, I, I, sh I showed them August Town, I went to Chivoli, I went them to Arnett. I spread them and move around Jamaica and show them, listen, this is our reality. Our reality is not this big and beautiful resort you are now, super clubs, to give you all facilities. Our reality is different. So when you convince that you can do something for these people, so we are different warriors there. So that's what makes my job more difficult this time. I don't have the players with me, and some of them, uh, the objective is a different objective now, because before all of them want want become a professional to take their livings by football career. Now some of them they are millionaires. Some of them don't need football. To, they play football now because they enjoy football. They like. It. So it's a different approach. So that make my 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 task now. How do you approach that? Uh, I have to take some decisions, I will. I have to take some decisions and take some risk, I will take. There is no way to succeed if you don't take risk, if you don't know how to, to, to be, as I said, in a balanced zone with, under pressure, because that you give me for the next decision you take for the, the World Cup qualify, you give me a lot of uh, pressure about the fans, the media and the everybody, but I will go to take some decisions because I don't see how you can qualify without a different spirit, you know. When you look at the cadre of players that we have now playing in Europe, um, in England and some in Scotland, all over the place, um, on paper it would look like Jamaica would have a stronger team than they had in 1997, mm -hmm. but when you look at the group that they're in this um, this World Cup qualifier it's very very tough um, can you safely say that we have a better talented bunch now than we had in 97 when you compare the group you have to look the group was that time it was Mexico Honduras Jamaica and San Vincent this time is Mexico Honduras Jamaica and Canada the only thing changed is Canada but what happened, I think Canada is playing wonderful football. Honduras, they kick out Mexico from Olympics. They have a very young team, a good team. Mexico is Mexico always. And we don't have the team together here. That's why make us a little bit more scared. I can see everybody saying, this is the worst group I take. I will took once. No, in 1996, when we took this group, it was very difficult. Very, very good, difficult for us. We didn't have experience. But what the, pro the problem is now that so far I am not convinced that I have the warriors. Why I explain that? Sometimes a beautiful woman does not become a good wife. True. Sometimes a good player does not make a good team. 
2006 Brazil had the best ever players put together and Brazil was a shame for us in 2006. So I am not looking for the, the, the best players, I am looking for the right and the strongest players that we can put together and build them as a spirit, Jamaica spirit, reggae boys, a warriors. So this is what I go to do and this is what the risk I go to take because I don't think we can qualify for the best players. We you to qualify with the best right and strongest players. You took a big risk um, in 96 when you invited Ricardo Gardner to the national team and obviously we know what, is, um, what Ricardo Gardner is doing now. Um, are you suggesting that you're going to be looking for players of that, is players like that who are willing to learn? Have you seen anybody around that you think you know, has that sort of spirit that you know, ignites your passion? You say I'm very impressed with the under-20 team. This under-20 team is one of the best we had so ever. And I'm very impressed. Really? And I'm not scared to take some decisions, I will. So we can safely say that we're going to see some under-20 players definitely in the national setup. I have no doubt, I have no doubt that you have to try. What is it about the national under-20 team that impresses you so much? The quality of players and the discipline they have, the, the, the capacity to learn daily they have, it's amazing. We played twice with the, the, the senior team, we played twice against them, we beat them twice, two nothing, both of the games, but it was not easy game, they couldn't, they couldn't do a damage for us. Certainly, when you look at also the, the under-17s, uh, there, there are so many teams that you guys are in charge of, all the Brazilians. Um, you have the under-17s, you have the females, and so on. The females didn't do particularly well in the last um, qualifying round, but certainly um, you must have an interest in that as well. Definitely, I am in charge of the, this, those teams too. Uh, I think for the ladies, we need two years continuously program. For the under 17, under 20, when you take under 20 now, look the passport of the players. The majority of them, you travel for the first time to Cayman. They don't have. Go there and take all US, Mexico, Honduras, Costa Rica, and take the passports of these players and look how many stamps they have in the passport. I can guarantee you, an under 20 national player that play for US, they have more than 50 stamps in their possible. Much more than 50 stamps. They have almost 100 games because they have start play under 15, two years, under 17, two years and a half, and now they are playing as under 20. They have more than 100 games as a national players. We have none. The majority of our team has none. So, but the quality we have, we are not scared. We are not this scared about the quality we have with our players and also the girls. When you see the quality, the technical ability they have, you can see, give two years program to them, feed them, teach them, you go to see. You, when you look football in Jamaica, you don't see a player make a pass in the space. You don't see a player create space by movement. All of them wait the ball on, the, on my feet. They stop that, make the pass here. So, the modern football, we cannot play like that. Players don't decide the game. What decides the game now is the, how the movements they do together. One movement for one player is it requests 10 other movements from the team. As a team now, I think around the world you can see it. Spain just, just was a champion in Europe. the Euro. So who was the biggest player in the, the team? They don't have. A player that you say, when you go there, if you take these players, Fabregas, if you take the Fabregas, the team is not win. If you take the, the another one, the team is not win. There is no these players anymore. The team is as, as a equal and they play as a team. When you look at, um, it brings me to another point of financing, because certainly you're speaking definitely to the fact that you have to have financial resources to let, let these girls travel to play games, the under 20s travel to play games, the national team to travel and play games. Um, Digital is one of the biggest sponsors of the, of the football, so, but certainly you need other sponsors to help with, with, the, with, with the football in Jamaica, certainly. And I think they have to come now, because now it's cheap. 
have to be more expensive for the come on board. And I said that in 1995, I remember one program I did, I said, sponsors, listen, if you come help us now, it's cheap, but after it will be very expensive. That's what become, after to come on board was very expensive. But I think the, 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 the main sponsor you have is Jesus Cell, Red Stripe, uh, NCB, GND, uh, all the sponsors you have, they are doing wonderful for us. But we need more, because before we had five teams, now we have nine teams that travel around and the under 15 women's team is, is preparing to go to Trinidad Tobago. Under 17 is prepared to go to Trinidad Tobago. And the under 17 girls, they are there play the qualification. The under 20 just returned from Puebla, Puebla in Mexico. The senior girls went also to play in Palos in, in Mexico. So it's a lot of money, it's a lot of food. We have to feed these boys. And you have to establish a program with great camp as you had once that under 17 players they, where they are the camp they reach very well because Dr. Little Little Hart Little White the Little White they give you a very good move for them. But when they go home they take some baskets and take home with them when they are not in camp. So we have to return this possibility. If you return the program as they are before what happened in the 90s, we qualified under 17, under 20, and the senior team to the World Cup, three categories. I remember I met the son of the Guatemalan uh, president, not the federation, the son of the president of Guatemala. He was beside me in the airplane and said, Coach, please tell me the secrets. We spent here more than five million a year and we didn't qualify, we never qualified any team to any competition in and in one project we qualified three teams. How is this possible? I said, this is a program. But this program is very costly. And we have now one big problem because before you have American Airlines, we can travel the team. We paid only 25% for the lowest fare. Exactly what we are doing in the separate clubs. In the separate club, what the agreement we have with them. We go for any property once they have uh, uh, loans available and we pay 25% for the lowest rate in that moment. This is something that sometimes don't cover the food because they eat a lot. So it's, it's a fantastic. Uh, sponsorship and that time American line give to us now we don't have yeah. the sponsorship we have is Air Jamaica now Air Jamaica don't fly everywhere and the, we, we got Virgin Airlines the agreement but just uh, uh, Kingston to London where you get only 30% we understand the, the airlines now because the price of the oil now is very difficult for them to sponsor anything but for us, it's very difficult. Very, very How is your wife dealing with this new, you know, this new campaign? Uh, my, my wife is, we, we are married 32 years now. And I keep saying I'm not married with only one woman because if, in 32 years we change a lot. Every five years, sometimes every year you change. Every five years my consideration, we change. Is a significantly a, a, a change and uh, I think I, I had Fatima was a six different persons I had for my luck every time she changed for better and uh, I'm very luck person I don't know sometimes I get old and I create some prop for her but mm. she, she's she's and she, she's every time so close she supports she didn't complain and yeah this is make my life because now she cannot be here in Jamaica. She has to go and beg because my daughter mm -hmm. is in treatment there in, in, in Brazil and she needs fat with them. Uh, the other ones, they are Renata is 30, Beatrice is 28, and, and Letizia is 22. But no matter how big they are, mommy is mommy. Yeah. yeah every time they call mommy, help me here. So, and she's divide now between me. And they also, we decided uh, ten years ago that she will not be any more coach's wife because I call her and say, listen, it's time for you to go for your dreams. And she's studying. She's uh, interior design, and she do a lot of courses, and she started some some little business business and also she's she's 
in charge of all my business because I hate business money numbers I don't like that so Fatima is in charge of, of everything so I only worked and she do the business for our restaurants in Brazil and the everything our applications and the, she's in charge the, the bank sometimes the, the managers call me and say hey come over it come here show up I go there just to socialize to do the PR talk to them but business is Tell the Jamaicans about that a little bit, a little bit about your business in Brazil, because people would like to know. I mean, you're into into food, a restaurant yeah, in Brazil. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, we, we decided this long time ago, it's me and my my brother, <clears throat> because we, we we can make money for many different ways. I can be an investor and go in the stock markets. I, I'm not against who does who who does that. I'm not against, definitely not. But I think the world. Nowadays, we are suffering by why? Jobless. So, what I decide that inv invest our money in something that creates jobs. We have now 120, 130 employees. So, if you imagine that one employee has wife and two kids, you go for four persons. If you go 120 for four, it's 480. So my money now is help directly 180 persons in Brazil. If you think that one family, four persons, they go to supermarkets, they go to bakery, they go to barber, they go to beauty salon, they go to, to, to electronics. So when you look what it generates, you go for a thousand people. So this is just making me feel good. What sort of what sort of business? What, what sort of food do you cook? A Brazilian style restaurant? We are we are with shrimps. Shrimp is is, is the, the biggest in the restaurants. We, we work. In, the last time my brother told me, he said that we are work with four tons of shrimp monthly <coughs> for the four restaurants we have. It's four tons of shrimp. It's a lot of shrimp. Wow! Yeah. yeah. And the big business, but we have all food there. And the, uh, we took the, when we went to Brazil, the girls and boy, we took mm -hmm. to the restaurant. And the, I told the, the one of the, 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 the supervisor of one restaurant, I said to him, "Listen, prepare more chickens. They like more chickens. Mm -hmm. Very, very <clears throat> fried and the rice, something." But I, I gave a shrimp, a piece of shrimp for each one. I was my, my mistake, man. I didn't know Jamaicans like <laughs> so much shrimp. They eat almost the our entire shrimp we had <laughs> that day in the restaurant. And they enjoy it. The food is, is so good there. And the, some of them say, why don't you do the business in Jamaica? <laughs> <laughs> See it one day. Let me just, in wrapping up, in closing off this interview, let me just ask, what's your biggest disappointment in football? In football, <clears throat> I think it was in 1989, in the World Cup with the Brazil national team, Why? Saudi Arabia. I, I had one of the best under 20 Brazil ever produced. And the, uh, we didn't know how to deal with, I was, 1989 is the, almost 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was 35 years old. I was for coach is is a young coach, 35 years, and I think I didn't handle wrong run wrong with the the expectations. We get the semi-finals and everybody said Brazil will be the champion because our team was so good. Was played so beautiful. It was three one five zero four. So. And I think that that's take us from the balanced zone and put us for the excitement zone. And we are so excited. We won the games. We won the championship before the games. What this is cannot happen. And players and the coach staff too. I had at that time, I don't know how many purpose I had all over, especially Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia 1989, what they paid that time was for Brazilians was scandals the <laughs> amount of money so I have the invitation so I thought more about the money than to be focused and uh, that teach me a lot yeah teach taught me a lot I was a big big uh, sufferer and uh, 
disappointment I had in football was that that competition because that just we kept the focus that was our competition but we lost we lost we, we celebrate before the game your greatest achievement in football tell me about it there is many I can tell, tell me all of them there is I, I'm always I'm so so integrated because I think people nowadays they are disconnected with the, each other. I think all about my rights and the, the another ones. I don't care about the, the another ones. This is wrong. You know, my rights and my obligation, my job description. Everybody is connect for your job, your rights, your obligations. And we qualify a, a small team from Rio de Janeiro to the big league. In, in, in Rio de Janeiro, and it was a poor community, and that community was was excited when we, we got the first. Can you imagine Brazil and Argentina? We are rivals. Yeah, big. <laughs> yeah, in football, and the first, the first competition Brazil won inside of Argentina was South America under 20 national South American uh, uh, championship. I was the coach of under 20. This team was 88, 89. We, we didn't won the, the World Cup. So inside the Argentina, we celebrate a championship. Man, you cannot believe the, 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 the feelings you have. And to see Argentinians there when you beat them 2-1. Uh, the girls, when you, you, you jump into the, the podium with the Brazilian girls, was the first ever Brazil get a medal in, in football. It was great. And now when I brought Curitiba, Curitiba has 2.5 million fans. We got promotion to the, the first division. It was a great feeling. And here in Jamaica, every time I, I have a great feeling. And the, the, the game against Costa Rica, when I saw that atmosphere, it looked like there is no, no, no time behind. That it looked like I play against Mexico and after I came and played against Costa Rica, the time didn't exist. So it was amazing, a great feeling. In closing off this interview, fantastic interview, I, I want to ask you, what, what will you say to the Jamaican fans? Um, Everybody is getting excited about the World Cup qualifiers, the possibility that Jamaica can qualify again for um, South Africa. As you would be well aware, South Africa means a lot to Jamaica because of the heritage. Uh, what would you say to the Jamaicans um, being very, very passionate about football? What would you say to the fans? I have to look for the fans, straight to them, because I have heard and received many calls. And the people are saying that Coach Simons is changed. Coach Simons now is laid back. Coach Simons is not the same Coach Simons before. I can guarantee you, Jamaicans, that I am the same person with more experience. So, my principles, there is no negotiation with my principles. Discipline, hard work, compromise, dedication. There is no way for any players, anyone make business with me. No, no, I am the same. What I change, I don't have to every day go and fight against somebody to say and think about me. Because that time when people, the journalists or, or, or commentators or the radio program and somebody say something about me, about the program, I have to stand firmly and to prove and try to prove that that was wrong to give confidence to sponsorship, to the fans, to the, the government, to the JFF. I had to do that. Now I need to go there to sponsor and say, listen, everything works well. That's okay. So they believe in myself. So I don't need every day be outside and get some fightings. So this is what people think. Coach Simons now is well relaxed. I'm not well relaxed. I'm not happy. I'm with my achievement. What the achievements I have, all of them is, is there in the past, in the back. What I want now is South Africa 2010. And I am work resilient to, to get this objective, this task, because I thought the reggae boys is the hope for the entire Jamaicans. The entire Jamaicans need reggae boys to succeed, to prove them that discipline, hard work, hope, dream, plans, they are worth and they can bring success and bring united, united, united people 
this is what we are looking for. I didn't change. I didn't change. I keep the same one, and the, the people know that the, the, the players, especially the players, they know Coach Simon didn't change. They have experienced some things in the camp, and they know that Coach Simon is the same that was before. Thank you. Thank you very much.